I go. Amen. Oh. Uh, I will hand you over to Justice, who is the side guy of the Cape Coast castle or the dungeons and it's going to take you through the treatment and everything that our ancestors passed through before. So he's a very good guy and I know he's going to tell you all the stories what this and then I told you that education started from Cape Coast is going to elaborate more on how those uh, who started the education from this very uh, castle and all that. So I hand you over to Justice, and this is your guest. Right, Akwaba. Uh, but that's it. Good. So um, let's start the talk of the from them cell. Let's be in the shade. Well, let's start. Again, you welcome to Cape Coast Castle. I'm going to be your guide. My name is Justice Papana Aqua. So first of all, I'm going to give you a brief history about this building, what this building was used for, the pain, the agony, and the atrocities and the brutalities our ancestors endured in these dungeons. We'll get to know all of these today. So this is Cape Coast Castle. Or this is Cape Coast Dungeons. Um, this structure dates back to the 17th century. It was built in 1665 by the English. But when we talk about who constructed this building, we can say Africans constructed this building. The labor they used were Africans, though they brought in some few masons, carpenters, engineers, and artisans from Europe. This is the third structure the Europeans constructed along the coast of Ghana. The first one was Elamina Castle, Elmina Castle was built around 1482 by Portugal. That one is about 200 years older than Cape Coast Castle. And now we have the other one in Accra by name Christian Sport Castle, and that was Denmark, 1661. We have several forts. Overall, it is estimated that West Africa had about 60 European forts and castles. And out of that number, Ghana had more than 50. So Ghana had about 90% of all the fort and castles West Africa had. So you will wonder why Ghana had that much. 
we had that match because of gold. Gold attracted the Europeans to this part of the world. So what I want to say here is the Europeans did not come here to spread the gospel. They didn't come here to give us their Western form of education. Later, that was second. The primary one was gold. Because they realized, they knew so well that the gold they bought from the North Africans had its source south of the Sahara. They also got to know we had a lot of gold here through Mansa Musa, mm -hmm. the richest man ever to live on this earth. So Mansa Musa was the emperor of the Ghana Empire. So when we talk about the Ghana Empire, um, we are talking about present-day Mali, Mauritania, Niger. This empire was big and vast, and Mansa Musa had a lot of gold. And interestingly, this part of the world made Mansa Musa rich because gold in salt was coming from this place through his empire to North Africa. So he made very good use of the gold and salt that went through his empire. And uh, the world actually got to know, because they don't normally talk about what Mansa Musa established in Africa, or what we had in Africa before the Europeans came to West Africa. So Mansa Musa established Timbuktu as a center of learning, where he established one of the first and finest universities in the world. Again, he had one of the finest and best libraries in the world. But actually, the world got to know of Mansa Musa when he traveled from Mali to Mecca. You know, wherever he passed, he devalued the price of gold. So this is to say, this man took a lot of caravans of gold along. So this news about his wealth in gold spread all over the Middle East and Europe. So yes, the Europeans got to know that we had a lot of gold here. 1471, the Portuguese arrived about 10 kilometers from here. They had what they searched for. Henceforth, they called that area Lamina, or Almina, the gold mine. Some few years later, they constructed Elmina Castle for the gold business. So that was the reason why Ghana's coast was flooded with European fortune castles. And with time, we had this issue with the Europeans fighting among themselves to have trading posts. So when you look at the history of this land, this land changed hands about five times among the Europeans. Once this place was occupied by Portugal, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, England. Before one could take over from the other, they went through a bloody war. So the British were the last occupants. They occupied this space 1664 after they defeated the Dutch and lived here from 1664 to 1957. So if you should note, they left here about 65 years ago. So Ghana's coast was flooded with various European fortune castles because of the gold. But brothers and sisters, Today, my emphasis will be on something else. I'm going to tell you a lot more about the transatlantic slave trade. It happened that in Europe, the demand for gold dropped or shifted to the demand for coffee, sugar, cotton, tobacco. Those crops could not grow in Europe. We have the era where the Europeans explored the new world force themselves to have colonies. They established plantation farms. These plantation farms to them demanded human labor. And unfortunately, this part of the world was shusted, all because they were like Africans were resilient, stronger, robust. The African could resist the weather in South America, the Caribbean, because if you look at the Caribbeans, the West Indies and South America, we are on the same tropic, we are on the same tropic with West Africa. So the weather here is much, much similar to the weather there. So unfortunately, we became victims of the transatlantic slavery. Talking about the structure from the one, the British built it for the transatlantic slave trade, not the gold trade. So that is the difference between Alamina Castle and Clipco's Castle. Around the 15th century, the Portuguese constructed that structure for gold. 17th century, the British constructed this for the transatlantic slave trade. So from here, the British moved Africans to New York, to Washington, to Maryland, Northern South Carolina, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia, Jamaica, 
Barbados, Bermuda, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, uh, British Guyana in South America, some few ended up in England. So those were the destinations from this build. And also note that this structure was the headquarters for the British trading activities in slaves and in gold in the whole of Africa. So this is one road structure for this. So I'll show you the condemned cell. The condemned cell was a debt chamber. People were executed in them. And the form of execution was through suffocation, mm -hmm. test, and hanging. So I say this is part of the physical torture the Europeans administered to us. They were trying to put some fear in us. They were trying to deter us. So that's a physical torture. Yes. We'll have a look at the context. But before we do so, you have any questions or comments? Or do I'll leave you to please watch it. Watch your hand. Watch your head. Watch your head. This one, all accusations. I said, just this. Yeah, I'm a member. Yeah. Watch your head. African Indian. I Genesis. He just died right before me. Watch your head. Watch your head. He just died. He's so cool. You don't hear me. You know it. So I'll turn up the light for some few seconds. Yeah. The number of people in this room will depend on those who try to escape, rebel or revolt. It could be five, it could be more than five, it could be less than five. And the sad aspect is the last person in this room had to suffocate to death before the police were removed. The police was now shown to the rest of the captives. From there, the police were thrown to the sea. So this is where they killed the freedom fighters, those who fought for their right of freedom, those who fought for their nation. And that was the business of this cell. Male dungeons. I don't know, I don't know. I could. I don't know. But it's, it's 16. 